Hey everybody, this is Sophie aka Malivri Tech. Welcome to my very first video in English. Today I'm in France in the beautiful gardens of Le Château de Versailles. I'm on a quick visit here to visit friends and family and I thought it was the perfect opportunity for me to tell you a bit about French literature. five years ago where I teach French and each time I meet a new student who wants to read French literature um, that student keeps telling me about Le Petit Prince, The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry and each time I'm like oh, it's not the only book to read from French literature it's a bit sad I mean there's there are a lot of things to read um, did you actually know that France is the third country to publish the most books per year after China and the United States so every year there are a lot of publications, a lot to choose from, and I really want to tell you a bit more about that. Because French literature is so rich, I have to narrow our selection to modern French literature. And of course, among this literature, I'm actually going to start talking about those that are extremely popular in France but actually I really don't like because um, most of them are ugh, usually um, they try to make money out of feelings instead of writing nice texts you know nice literature nice stuff um, but if you really want to go to France and kind of blend with the natives who read that kind of books and who know about these authors, maybe it's a good thing that you know about them, know that they're extremely popular, they're the ones who sell the most in France and who actually are translated for most of them. So let's start with Guillaume Musso. Guillaume Musso, okay, so his problem is to me he writes screenplays instead of books so you don't really have like a great narrative uh, and also it's pretty boring to read like it's, oh, but I don't know why it's extremely popular. Um, it's just not my thing. I just read one. It was afterwards. It, oh my god! It was it was it was already too much. <laughs> um, we can also talk about Catherine Catherine Pankol. Catherine Pankol. Um, she's also extremely popular. She actually um, wrote a trilogy that is called The Yellow Eyes of Crocodiles, and it was also adapted into a movie uh, by a French director. So the first book. The first book was really nice. Uh, actually, someone gave it to me. It was nice. It was fresh, uh, tender. It was just different. It's just number two and number three are really weird. And then over time, she wrote a second trilogy with the same characters. And it's just, you know, over time, it's just a question of money. Uh, there's no quality. It's, it's the same old story over and over with the same type of characters. We also have Marc Lévy. Oh my god, Marc Lévy, some people just swear by his name. Uh, extremely popular, but I think, I think it's a bit sad because some readers just read that type of um, book and, and also are extremely um, faithful to that type of author. I've never read any of uh, his books, but it was, it was on purpose because um, it's the, the type of book that makes money out of feelings. I don't know, it's just not good literature at all. But he's translated in English and you can find books that are, for example, entitled If Only if It Were True, Finding You. I have to read my notes because I, I don't know the titles in English, but um, P.S. from Paris. Uh, some of them actually have been adapted into movies too. Um, last but not least, Gilles Le Gardinier. Gilles Le Gardinier is the new guy, the new favorite, and actually my father is going to kill me because he totally loves him. Uh, but. I just read one of his books, uh, which is named Complètement Cramé, that you can translate by absolutely crazy. A lot of people love his books because they think it's super fresh, they think it like, it's like the new sun in their lives, it's super positive, it's uh, with great intentions, but it's actually extremely poor, uh, literally, and full of cliches, full of stereotypes. I mean, 
I kept reading, I mean, I, I, I read one because my father really wanted me to try. Uh, so I read one, I tried, and I kept sighing and just was like, oh, it's terrible. The thing is I actually got a lot of backlash when I posted my um, negative review online. Uh, people are so behind him that you can't say a thing that is not as positive as what they think. It's terrible. Like people just told me, oh, you're so negative, you are so mean, how can you say that? And, the, and then started to insult me too. <laughs> so um, that's the type of um, reaction I got. That can actually show you how much people love Gilles Le Gardinier. Um, and the thing is, you can actually recognize his books from the terrible kitsch, blinding colors on his covers, uh, and there are always cats on them. Yeah, cats. I don't think he's translated in, uh, in English, but let's say if you like Hallmark Christmas movies, it's, if it's your thing, you could like it. Uh, it's, just, it's just not for me, uh, to be honest. The four authors I just told you about, I would not recommend because it's not quality. It's just not the best of what you can find. going to talk about are all in their 40s, 50s, um, extremely popular in France, maybe not as much as the ones I just talked about, but they have really good qualities in their writings and um, actually I think they're underrated in the US because either they're not translated or they are but they're not really famous or not really recognized for their works. So, so I think it's uh, a good selection I have for you. So let's start with um, Tonino Benacquista. So his name sounds Italian. Uh, he does have Italian origins, but he's French. He was born in France. I think he's mostly famous for his uh, book Malavita that has been translated by um, either The Family or Bad Fellas in English. And it was adapted into a movie uh, by Luc Besson of I think maybe 10 years ago already, time flies. It's a story of an American family who just uh, moves to France and they were actually part of the mafia in New York and they are escaping the big boss of the mafia. So they move to a little village in the north of France and of course, you know, they, they're supposed to stay quiet uh, but they just can't. <laughs> There's a lot of action and it's fun and uh, it's quite refreshing. I really enjoy the way he writes. Uh, he wrote another story I really enjoyed. The book is called Saga. I don't think it's been translated in English, but if you can read French, I highly recommend this one. So this is the story of um, people who've been hired by a TV channel because they just have like a slot in the middle of the night that they, ha they, just, ha they just have to fill. So they hire four um, screenwriters and they can write about anything. They have low budget, uh, but they can write about anything, so they don't take it seriously. But in the end, it turns out to be something that becomes extremely popular. And of course, things happen. It's quite original. And just to see how the show, the TV show they're creating is just um, becoming real and just the process of uh, creating a show it's super interesting it's fun to actually he's a writer who knows how to write he knows how to play with rhythm too and the third book i read uh, from benacquista is called in french quelqu'un d'autre i think it's been translated by just simply someone else and it's the story of two guys who meet they start a challenge of becoming totally somebody else i don't really remember well but I remember I have a very nice memory of it too. And over time, I really think that Tonino Benacquista is somebody that you can really trust in terms of literature that you, you're gonna enjoy reading. And that's the most important. Let's talk now about Eric Emmanuel Schmidt. Eric Emmanuel Schmidt is translated too in English, but actually not uh, on his uh, novel, mostly on his short stories. And actually, I don't really read a lot of short stories, so I'm not gonna really talk about them. He's got a lot of awards including one Goncourt, I think it was in 2010, for a short story collection. Uh, I think it was called Concerto to the Memory of an Angel. I haven't read that, but uh, usually when you get the Goncourt, uh, it means that it's 
good. It's not necessarily extremely good because the Goncourt is a bit of a political uh, award, but still, getting it means popularity, uh, means more um, sales and more credibility, more more everything. Anyway, I've already read four of his works, uh, and the most I would say important one to me is called The Alternative Hypothesis. In French, it's La Part de l'Autre. And this is the story of Hitler. I don't know if you guys knew it, but uh, Hitler, when he was young, when he was interested in arts and wanted to enter a school of arts. And he was rejected. After he was rejected from school, he started having um, his famous ideas about the Jews and started having political ideas and he he became the guy everybody knows about. Eric Emmanuel Schmidt actually writes about the what if. What if he had been admitted? Uh, what if he had become this artist that he really wanted to become? The story actually follows the two Hitlers. Uh, the Hitler who went to art school and the one who became the one we know. This is extremely interesting. Uh, this is really powerful. It's so well done, so well written. This guy knows how to write and knows how to make you just eat the book. It's, it's just a book you have to read. Another book that I read from him is called Monsieur Ibrahim and the Flowers of the Quran. It's a way shorter novel, but it, it's the story of a young boy who meets a Muslim guy who has a, a, a sort of shop. The old guy and the and the kid become friends, and it's just it's just sweet. Schmidt writes about you know how to how to go beyond um, differences, especially between religions. Actually, you can find that in another one of his short novels uh, that is called um, Noah's Child, L'Enfant de Noé, and it's 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 the same principle. It's the same type of story. It's the story of um, a priest welcoming a Jewish child. Uh, during war. What's really interesting about this author and what I really enjoy is that he focuses on how everybody can just work with each other and just be able to live with you know one another and uh, that's touching, that's powerful, there's a message uh, behind every story and that's also really great. That's one of the authors that's who's translated in English, but actually his best works are not translated in English. So that's, that's a shame. That's really too bad. Third author I'd like to talk about, his name is Jean Tully. And so far I've read two of his books, but I'm actually interested in reading more. Because uh, the more I read, the more I'm like, I'm becoming a fan. He's written novels, comic books, and some of his works have been adapted into plays. Something I really enjoyed I don't think it's been translated in English. Uh, it's about the the King Charles IX in France, and about how his mother led him to the massacre of Protestants in 1572 in France. How this event made him totally crazy. It's fun because it's so old in time, but Jean Tully wrote the thing as as if it was something from. The modern times so all the characters are talking like just people our age it's so original and it, it comes out of out of nowhere that's the thing the second book I read by Jean Tully is called um, the suicide shop le magasin des suicides and actually it was the first one I read and it's just, it's just so weird you've never seen that type of story before. So this is the story of a family who has a shop um, to sell stuff to help you commit suicide. And everything they tell you, the advice and everything, it's just to make your suicide more perfect. And you, you just have stories of people who come to the shop who are totally desperate and, now, and, and then you have conversations so, so weird like to choose the perfect poison or just okay I don't want to die that way so how can I make it more dramatic it's it's, it's very original and I don't think it's for everybody it's dark humor and but I but I like it I, I enjoyed it and it's so different I think it's um, it's valuable in that way um, the second part of the book I remember was not that great because the thing is um, in the family so there are several characters and they're all into suicide and they're all into death. And then there's the last boy of the family, the, the, the kid, who's, who's like so into life, 
who loves life, who just wants to have a happy time with everybody. And he doesn't get along with his family then, uh, that's normal. But the second part of the book is a bit, was a bit disappointing in that way because he changes his whole family. And then in the end, uh, they're all happy and they, and they don't sell uh, things to get killed and, 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 and stuff like that anymore. It started such a, in such a way and it did not end the same way. The good thing with Jean Tollet is that he adapts his writing to the situation, to the type of story. He, he seems to be somebody very well documented, who doesn't write like, like that, you know, without thinking, without working on it. I think it's the same thing for Eric Emmanuel Schmidt. Like, it's, it smells knowledge, it smells research, it smells like there has been a lot of work done before writing. Lola Lafont is the type of author who does it all, like she sings, she dances, she's an all-rounder, she writes, like she does everything. And she's written this very popular book called The Little Communist Who Never Smiled that's been rewarded by a lot, a lot of prizes, literary prizes. And it's about the story of um, the gymnast uh, Nadia Komaneshi. You know, this little girl who got like in, in the 70s, uh, the very first perfect 10. When she was young, she was extremely famous. Uh, she traveled all around the world. She went to the Olympic Games. She won several times. She was unbeatable and everybody was talking about her. But over time, she grew up and then athletes, especially kids and young girls who grow old, uh, they can be as good as before. And because they start becoming women, they start becoming having breath and, 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 and etc. They, they, they start being rejected. And from that, lots of things happened and Lola Lafont really wrote a really good story, really well documented. And you follow Nadia Komaneshi up to the US uh, when she moves to the US. And what's also interesting in this story is that you see her life in Romania uh, while there was the dictatorship uh, by Ceausescu. You see how, how she had privileges, but also how she was prevented from doing things because of the dictatorship. And I highly recommend. Her latest book is called uh, Mercy Mary Patty. And it's about Patty Hearst, this famous criminal in America. And it's about her kidnapping. I haven't read it, but it seems really interesting. This author seems to be, every time she writes something, it seems to be like the jackpot. So I think, I think at, some, at some point I'll read her other novels. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about somebody who is not translated and not very popular in France, but still, that's, that's a shame. Um, her name is uh, Isabelle Stieb, and she wrote this book called Berenice 3444, 34-44. It's the story of a young Jewish girl whose only dream is to enter the Comédie Française, which is uh, a drama house very, very famous in France that was created back in the 17th century. And we follow her actually rising like a star, doing this while it's wartime. The very interesting thing about this book is that you see all the backstage of La Comédie Française and this is, this is something you, you don't really see that much. This is a house that's very discreet and all its members are really respectable people. You never hear about these people in the press, like in the tabloids or anything. This author... <laughs> Uh, she used to work there and that's her first novel and I highly recommend it. I know it's not translated in, uh, in English, uh, but if once again if you're able to read French, uh, that could be something original and unusual to read. <laughs> of this video I hope you liked it don't forget that you can read reviews of some of the books I presented here today on my website libriotech.free.fr see you soon for new adventures and of course new literatures bisous bisous five years ago where I actually teach English and um, <laughs> 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 um, and um, it's it's <sighs> it's what that's the question um, <laughs>
Tant qu'on touche un photo bombé par les mecs à côté de toute façon. <rire> Vite, minute. 